Hello everybody and welcome to today's webinar, Automating Asia-Pacific Cyber Threat Intelligence at Scale. I'm Elliot and together with Ben from Eclectic IQ, we'll discuss new trends in vulnerabilities and how to integrate threat vision intelligence into the Eclectic IQ platform to mitigate these vulnerabilities and manage the investigation of exploits. I'll start by briefly explaining who Team T5 are and then jump right into vulnerabilities, discussing attacks and their trends. Then I'll give a brief overview of Threat Vision before handing over to Ben to introduce Eclectic IQ's solution, explain how integrating Threat Vision supports organizations wishing to tackle vulnerabilities, and finally give a demo of Threat Vision Intelligence on the EIQ platform. So who are Team T5? Team T5 consists of world-class cyber threat analysts with more than 20 years of experience. Leveraging our geographic and cultural advantages, we have the best understanding of cyber attackers in the Asia Pacific region. Based on our research in malware and advanced persistent threats, APTs, we provide cyber threat intelligence reports and anti ransomware solutions to clients in the USA, Japan, and Taiwan. Clients include government agencies, financial businesses, telecom operators, high tech enterprises electronic manufacturing service companies, and managed security service providers, MSSPs. We offer threat intelligence, threat hunting, and incident response products and services, although today we'll just be touching on threat intelligence. First, let's talk about vulnerability attacks and trends. This slide highlights significant CVE exploits that triggered large-scale attack campaigns. These vulnerabilities were found in various common file types, including Java, PDF, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. These exploits were often combined with social engineering techniques to conduct precise, targeted attacks, marking a golden age of spear phishing email campaigns. However, the landscape began to change with the introduction of new security measures. In 2008, Microsoft released Windows Vista SP1, which included comprehensive memory protection features such as ASLR, address space layout randomization, DEP, data execution prevention, stack cookies, safe SEH, safe structured exception handling, and more. In 2010, Adobe recognized the severity of exploits in the wild and introduced sandbox protection for their PDF reader and flash player. And of course, the emergence of EDR, the concept of endpoint protection and response products began to take shape. With these advancements in mitigation and protection, attackers can no longer achieve remote code execution simply by exploiting a buffer overflow. Instead, they often need to chain multiple exploits, such as information leaks and sandbox escapes, to succeed. Edge devices serve as vital network endpoints, bridging the data center and the real world by gathering and transmitting crucial information. As their significance grows, these devices have become key targets for advanced persistent threat APT actors, often marking the initial breach point in cyber attacks. The COVID-19 pandemic has further heightened reliance on edge devices, with the rise in remote work requiring increased access to enterprise networks, emphasizing the necessity of robust security measures. Our research highlights an upward trend in the exploitation of edge devices over the past three years, particularly by Chinese APT actors. Edge devices, by definition, are network endpoints interfacing between the data center and real-world environments, frequently collecting and sending vast amounts of data. This function makes them attractive targets for APT actors looking to gather intelligence. Moreover, the shift to remote work following the COVID-19 pandemic has led to a greater exposure of edge devices, as organizations have adjusted to accommodate work from home requirements. Most edge devices operate on closed platforms that receive minimal attention during daily operations, often lacking antivirus or EDR monitoring. Even when an incident occurs, these devices typically do not have an interface for incident response teams to conduct investigations. Additionally, third party vulnerabilities may go unnoticed as demonstrated by last year's targeted attack on Barracuda's email security gateways, where the root cause was a vulnerability in a Perl XLS file parsing library. The absence of modern exploit mitigations in many edge devices further aids attackers. For example, a significant vulnerability in Citrix ADC devices was easier to exploit due to the lack of ASLR protection, simplifying the process of weaponization. Patching these devices is also a challenge 
their critical role in corporate networks makes service interruptions nearly intolerable, and patching often requires version-by-version version updates, extending downtime and complicating management. In some cases, patches might not even be available, as edge devices often outlast their support lifecycle, leaving them vulnerable to zero-day exploits. These factors create a heavily imbalanced battle over edge devices, strongly favoring attackers. Having the right intelligence at your fingertips can make all the difference. Team T5 Intel is your essential tool for navigating these challenges, and here are the three big reasons why. Number one, decades of expertise at your fingertips. With Team T5, you gain instant access to over a decade of specialized research in APAC cyber threats. Our threat vision platform consolidates years of knowledge and insights, making it easier for you to leverage this deep well of expertise without having to start from scratch. Number two, enhanced visibility across multiple threat vectors. From advanced persistent threats, APTs, to C2 systems, to dark web activities and emerging vulnerabilities, especially from APAC adversaries, our platform gives you the visibility you need to stay ahead of the curve. Number two, enhanced visibility across multiple threat vectors. Team G5 Intel sharpens your focus on a broad spectrum of threats, from advanced persistent threats, APTs, and command and control, C2 systems, to dark web activities and emerging vulnerabilities, especially from APAC adversaries, our platform gives you the visibility you need to stay ahead of the curve. And number three, real-time insights for actionable intelligence. Stay informed of the latest trends and critical threat updates in real time. Team T5 Intel is designed for seamless use, ensuring that you can quickly access all the information you need without hassle, allowing you to respond swiftly and effectively to any threat. Now you know why having intelligence on vulnerabilities is so important, I would like to introduce our cyber threat intelligence platform, ThreatVision. ThreatVision is a comprehensive intelligence platform that specializes in providing Asia-Pacific centered cyber threat intelligence. With over a decade of experience in researching malicious code, APT, advanced persistent threat groups, and cyber threats in the Asia-Pacific region, ThreatVision offers a wealth of intelligence resources for organizations. The platform caters to different roles within the cybersecurity landscape, including decision makers, risk managers, and incident responders. By offering strategic, operational, and tactical threat intelligence, it aids C-level executives, risk managers, and incident responders in understanding the threat landscape, identifying malicious actors, and deploying effective defenses against cyber threats. ThreatVision's customizable intelligence investigation and consulting services, along with its user-friendly interface and curated reports, empower organizations to make informed decisions, allocate security resources effectively, and enhance their cybersecurity. We offer world-leading APAC threat intelligence, tracking over 150 adversary groups and 1,400 malware families. Our platform is recognized as the number one resource for APAC threat research, providing extensive insights and actionable intelligence to help organizations proactively manage their cybersecurity risks. At the core of ThreatVision's offerings are our comprehensive intelligence reports. These reports are tailored to provide in-depth, actionable insights across different aspects of cybersecurity, from APTs to vulnerabilities and the dark web. Our intelligence reports are designed to give you a multi-layered understanding of the threat landscape, helping your organization stay ahead of potential risks and make informed strategic decisions. In this slide, I'd like to highlight a few key reports relevant to our integration with EIQ. First is the patch management report. Uh, it's updated bi-weekly and the report helps you prioritize your patch management efforts by summarizing around 100 critical vulnerabilities. It includes details on affected products and patching instructions, allowing you to quickly address the most pressing threats. Then we have the Vulnerability Insights Report, VIR. This report dives into the most critical vulnerabilities identified in our patch management reports. It offers technical details, potential attack scenarios, and detection tools to better prepare your defenses. It's published every two weeks, ensuring you have the latest intelligence to act on. Our offerings don't stop there. For instance, our campaign tracking report provides strategic insights into ongoing APT campaigns, while our Deep and Dark Web weekly alert offers real-time updates on emerging threats from the dark web. As you can see, ThreatVision provides a broad spectrum of intelligence to cover every angle of cybersecurity, ensuring the organization is equipped with the knowledge it needs to stay secure. 
Team 5 has been studying hacker behavior in the Asia Pacific region for many years, and we've mastered the most complete first hand hacker intelligence and refined it into precise indicators of compromise, IOCs. Customers can directly import these indicators into various network defense devices and firewall applications through API integrations to effectively detect the most serious hacker behaviors and quickly grasp the status of the network. When a specific IOC alert is triggered, threat vision can be used as a starting point to further understand the threat events, malicious programs, attack methods, and malicious group background information related to the IOC, helping enterprise security personnel quickly and effectively understand the attack situation and take proactive defense measures against specific attack behavior in advance. Cyber threat intelligence is stronger when platforms are able to communicate with each other and intelligence can easily be transferred across, which is why we've teamed up with Eclectic IQ to integrate threat vision intelligence into their platform. Team 5 also offers a free trial of threat vision, so Eclectic IQ users are able to check out threat vision intel and see how it works with their current threat intelligence workflow on the EIQ platform without any hassle. We'll now hear from Ben, sales engineering lead at Eclectic IQ, who will share what EIQ is and give us a demo of threat vision intelligence in action on their platform. Thank you, Elliot, and good morning, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ben Webster. I have a background in security operations and threat intelligence in the United Kingdom, and I've been working with Eclectic IQ for the past six years in both a pre-sales and post-sales capacity, helping prospective and existing customers with CTI and building and managing intelligence practices. Today, I'm going to be demonstrating for you the Threat Intelligence Center. This is our flagship software product, a threat intelligence platform for CTI analysts and other analyst disciplines to work with and manage threat intelligence data. Before we jump into the demo, I'm going to spend a couple of minutes talking about who Eclectic IQ are and some of our customers. So like Team T5, Eclectic IQ was founded in 2014. We're a European cybersecurity scale-up based in the Netherlands, and we have offices now across Europe, North America, India, and Singapore. We have customers in all of these regions, including both large government and large enterprise customers in multiple verticals. In terms of our customer base, we originally started primarily in the government area. We've worked over the years with many MODs, NCSCs, CERTs, and other government disciplines for the collection, processing, and dissemination of intelligence data. And we have a lot of experience working with these customers and their environments, which are often very complex and have strict requirements in terms of both deployment and sharing. Therefore, we have a lot of experience with managing and delivering services in high classification environments. Large enterprise is no different in some respects. We also have many large customers in the banking, manufacturing and retail sectors, also with stringent and complex policies for networking and delivery and management of intelligence data, often with many stakeholders. We have a few specialist customers in areas like critical infrastructure and customers like ISACs and MSSPs who specialize in sharing and disseminating intelligence to their stakeholders. Today, we'll be touching a little bit on use cases for all of these customers and features that they all use within the Intelligence Center. I also want to talk a little bit about automating at scale. As is the subject of the webinar, we want to talk about how we collect and manage intelligence from services like Team T5 and other services, and then deploy that within our organization to derive value and improve our defenses. Supporting our customers across the intelligence lifecycle, our platform provides features to assist with each stage, both in planning collection, managing the collection, and automating this processing, normalizing all of the data we collect into a single format to make it easier to work with data from multiple sources, and then providing tools for both the analysis and production of threat intelligence data before finally sharing it either internally within our organization or externally with any stakeholders that may require it. To actually integrate a service like Threat Vision, bring Team T5 data into the Eclectic IQ Intelligence Center, is actually very easy. For this, we would create an incoming feed, an automated collection task to collect and manage the transformation of that data. This is the case for all sources that we work with. We will build and maintain integrations with these services. And this includes both commercial and open source feeds, open sharing initiatives, such as your Alien Vaults and X-Forces of the world, and then custom or open uh, formats such as public resources, GitHub, S3 buckets, any source of intelligence that we might want to bring into the platform, we can automate this collection for you. 
Once your analysts have processed and managed this data, we then provide a similar range of tools to help with dissemination in whichever formats most suit the business. For some customers, this might mean just sharing indicators and pushing them to the infrastructure for detection and prevention use cases. For some of our other customers, this involves complex analyses of campaigns, threat actors and malwares, and publishing everything from advisories to quarterly and annual reports. So now we'll move on to the demonstration and I'll jump into the platform itself and take you through some of the features. So here we have the Threat Intelligence Center. This is a threat intelligence platform for the collection and management of threat intelligence data. And here we can see the data model mocked up on the built-in graph tool to help us understand the available entities that we can use and the relationships we can draw between them. From the top down, we can see contextual entities such as campaigns, the victims that they may be targeting, such as organizations or individuals, details of threat actors, or if we don't know the identities of certain actors, maybe just intrusion sets helping to describe capabilities. And then as we move down, we find more technical information to help us represent threats such as malwares, exploits, vulnerabilities, and indicator intelligence for detection and prevention. All of the different sources that we work with help us to collect and manage this data. Some sources will provide flat lists of report content that our analysts will want to consume and read and potentially turn into actionable intelligence for their organization. For more automated use cases, such as indicator intelligence, we may collect this automatically from various sources, filter to reduce things like false positives and avoid aged out IOCs, and then export this in a suitable format that meets our business requirements. This mock-up is just to illustrate the flexibility of the data model. Some of our customers will only use a handful of these entities, while others may wish to use a wider range to illustrate and model key threats. Now for this demonstration, I'm going to also walk through the collection capabilities of the platform, touching on the automation side of things first, and then also the manual collection stages. So in my configuration menu here, I have several incoming feeds that I have configured, drawing particular attention here to Team T5's feeds for vulnerabilities and reports. Both of these feeds are bringing in data from Threat Vision. In the case of vulnerabilities, we can see a history of downloads, the information collected and processed by the platform, and eventually the resulting data. In this case, CVE entities, which will provide key information on vulnerabilities, as well as related exploits, which will help us with prioritization and testing of any exploits that come with the CVEs reported. The reports feed is similar, providing a different set of content. And here we see some of those report categories that Elliot referred to during the presentation. In this case, we can see some flash reports and some of the monthly reports published by the Team T5 analysts. There's also associated data here. So for each report, we'll also have associated IOCs, including file hashes, infrastructure information, such as malware C2s, domains, and IPs. For all of these feeds, this data is normalized from its proprietary format, whichever vendor we're working with, into a common format within the platform so that the analysts can use a single search and graph tool to explore all of the data in one place, no matter the source. Once all of our data is collected, it's made available here in the search. The search allows us to create complex queries to track down key information and perform research into critical topics. I won't go into too much detail during this presentation about how precisely our workflows work, but I will just say that search is pretty much the core of how all of our workflows function. So anytime we've identified a search that what we want to export or alert on or help with organization, it always starts with a search query. And this allows us to save and explore data based on these search queries that we create. Now, before we move further into the data itself within the platform, I also want to talk about manual collection. In those situations where we don't have an automated feed, we might want to collect something like a blog post, or maybe we're reviewing an internal resource like log data. And we want to use the browser integration to help us both identify known information and collect novel intelligence and add it to the intelligence center for further analysis. For this, we'll navigate to a blog post here from Team T5. This blog post goes into detail about a CVE reported in uh, August last year, June last year, uh, discussing Barracuda email security gateway. 
And of particular interest to me in this blog post is that it also associates the vulnerability to a known threat actor group, uh, UNC4841. There's also mention of some of the threat actors tooling, for example, some malwares they've been known to associate with. In this hypothetical example, this is a report that I have not already collected in my platform. So I'm going to use the browser integration to scan this page and collect the data. This will also help me identify any information I already know about. For example, the CVE highlighted at the top here, we actually have this already in our platform. I can follow this link and this will take me to an existing entity and show me precisely what information I already have. This allows analysts to go from the browser integration while they're exploring some new concept, such as the CVE, directly into the intelligence platform to find the related information. In the case of this entity, there's a description and some metadata to help me understand the impact and risk. And there's also related intelligence, which we can explore through the graph. Bringing this into the graph tool here, I can now explore the relationships in more detail. From the CVE that we just highlighted, we can see that there is an exploit represented by this tool down here. So this helps us to understand that there are available exploits for us to test. And looking at this entity in more detail, we can see there's also proof of concept code and a process to follow. This is both useful for me as a defender to understand and test a particular threat and evaluate how at risk we are. It's also valuable to attackers. So this will help me prioritize this vulnerability if I'm making decisions about which ones to patch first. Other relationships available to us here on the left include related threat actor and Dariel, also known for using the same exploit in Barracuda devices, as well as many more vulnerabilities linked to this same threat actor. So if our investigation takes us in the direction of Andariel, the actor, we can follow this thread and start exploring various different CVEs, each of which may provide more information about sources, possible exploits, and the graph tool allows us to explore this data interactively. So now we can ask for more information and explore this threat. And for this one CVE alone, as an example, we can see many exploits are available. Another TA has also appeared here, suggesting that this vulnerability is used by multiple actors. Backtracking a little bit, we want today to focus on the other links over on the right side, including the link to UNC4841. We also have a report here, which represents the report from the browser, which I've now collected through the browser integration. When using the browser integration, we can ask the platform to bring the report in. In this case, it's brought the blog content into the platform, so I have it available for future reference. This includes all of the technical information, such as indicators of compromise, and if available, MITRE attack information. These can then act as further pivot points. In the case of this report, for example, we can see several file hashes, IPs, and other information were available on the page and have been extracted for us to explore further and continue pivoting to other related intelligence. Today, what I want to focus on is UNC4841 and using the platform to explore this threat and document and eventually share intelligence. Now, having collected this post, I want to now use this actor entity so this is an entity that we've created to represent this threat actor. We've included some key information that we've pulled together from other sources of data. And we've also added MITRE ATT&CK techniques to represent known techniques used by the threat actor. Like the other entities here on the graph, this entity also has related data that we've chosen to use the platform to model. In this case, we've chosen six malwares associated with the actor. And for each of these malwares, we've chosen to visualize MITRE ATT&CK information so that we can understand some of the known techniques. When collecting intelligence from various sources, it's typical that they provide trend information with something like MITRE ATT&CK, but often this is provided in list format. And as an analyst, it's difficult to parse this sort of information easily. In the Eclectic IQ Intelligence Center, we provide a visualization tool to make this easier. I can highlight one or a subset of entities and bring them into the visualization tool to visualize these techniques all together. Here I can filter for the techniques that have been returned, and now I can very easily observe behavior. I can see the kill chain from left to right for this actor and these associated malwares, but I can also drill down and see for each case which specific malwares achieve which part of this attack. We can see now over history for this actor that in terms of initial access, they've previously utilized several malwares with different techniques. 
and we can drill down into each of these to explore the specifics, reading about the malware itself and understanding its nature. We can also use this view to capture annotations. So it's very common when working with MITRE ATT&CK that it's useful for reporting on trends, but doesn't really provide us a way to capture key details. For example, the attacker might use phishing as a vector, but we want to capture details about what the phishing email looked like, whether it used a spear phishing link or an attachment file, and what the language was, who the targeted victim was. That kind of information can be captured as annotations on the attack layer if we want to just add small annotations here, or we can drill down into the specific entities and create additional content. This includes both notes on the individual entities, for example, on the actor, I may wish to provide more notes here, or I can create additional related entities and then use those to capture more information. For this specific investigation, I may wish to use each malware and then apply notes to those to help add additional data. This allows me to collaborate. So when we're collecting data from services like Team T5 and other feeds, whether commercial or open source that we may be subscribed to, we can then use the Intelligence Center to apply our own organization's understanding of these threats. This is then always available in our knowledge base and we can build this up over time so that we have a library to refer to in the future when researching these threats or looking to track change over time. Now talking a little bit about workflow, I want to show some of the different data types and how we as analysts might leverage and eventually export this data. On the graph here, we have the blog post that we collected. We pivoted to the actor and modeled the malwares and started to explore the technique information. As an analyst, I might now want to summarize this information and share it out of my platform. I can either create a new report myself. There's a rich text editor tool built into the platform to enable this. I can create reports directly within my intelligence center, and this allows me to link my own insights and my own report content directly to the raw intel. This intel is then indexed in the same platform and I can export it through exactly the same workflows. And this means that we don't have to maintain a separate silo of information. There are also tools available to analysts within the platform to create tasks. For example, we might want to create a task for one of these malwares and then ask one of our users to define detection rules or to recommend configuration changes, perform a deeper investigation into this threat. In this case, I'll assign a task to myself investigate a malware foxglove, produce a few detection rules, and maybe write an advisory. The goal here for me is to be able to say that my organization is defended against this particular threat. And to achieve that, I need to implement some detection rules and maybe recommend some changes to improve our defenses. By creating tasks, I can use the platform to manage all of these different processes across multiple different topics. So here we're investigating particular malwares, actors, we're using tasks just to track administration effort within the platform, all sorts of different details and techniques and investigations that we're working on. We also have a built-in alerting capability within the platform, which allows us to create workflows around new intelligence as it's released. Here in the discovery view, I have several rules that I've defined down in the bottom left. If we take a look at these, we can actually see that some of them are related to different use cases. For example, APT41 as a threat actor of interest, we might just want to be notified whenever something new comes in discussing APT41. Specific breaches, such as the recent Mobile Guardian breach in Singapore of interest, we may want to be notified when there's new developments, given that this was only recently publicly reported. And then specific to some of our sources, if we know the content that we're collecting, so in the case of Team T5, there are specific report types, which our business will want to consume in particular ways. So in this case, we've created discovery rules to filter for those specific reports. And this feature provides us a way to alert and triage new intelligence. So now I can be notified whenever a new monthly report is released directly in the intelligence platform, pivot in to find the report in question, I can now read through the report, including the original document provided by the vendor, which we can find here. Uh, in the case of the Team T5 monthly reports, these are pretty significant pieces of work with lots of topics and information. So definitely something that analysts will want to work through whenever they're released. In the case of other report types provided by Team T5, for example, flash reports, these are much smaller reports focused on specific topics. In this case, we can get through these a little bit more quickly, and they may still refer to multiple topics. Once again, we always have access to the original document if we want to explore those. In each of these cases, 
This workflow enables me to assign tasks from this view and also remove them from the queue once they've been processed. So as a value add on top of intelligence services you might be subscribed to, the platform is giving us a way to manage this data as we collect it. It's very common with a lot of our customers uh, and prospects that we speak to that their data collection uh, reaches into the millions of entities, primarily indicators, but often also reports. And there frankly isn't enough time for analysts to get through all of that information. And it's very common that Intel vendors will publish data for a wide range of industries and customers, not all of which will be applicable to your business. So in the case of this platform, we can use it to filter for that key information. Within the search tool, we also have that ability at any time. So if, if we wanted to filter for particular information, for example, here I'll filter for Team T5 reports. We can filter to just the reports here from this one source. Now we can include additional information. For example, maybe I'm only interested in Fortinet as a keyword. It looks like we have no reports. I'll check the vulnerabilities feed instead and see if we have any data available over there. This time it looks like we have some CVEs. So in terms of vulnerabilities analyzed by Team T5, there's two CVEs here, as well as two exploits that have been mentioned. So using the search, if I was interested in maybe procuring a Fortinet device, or I want to check if my existing Fortinet devices have any vulnerabilities, I can use both the search and the alerting capabilities to do this. Once I've found an entity like this vulnerability here, I can then explore the available information. In this case, it's a straightforward notification of a particular threat. And there's a related, uh, in the case of the second CVE, there are related exploits for us to explore in more detail. Once again, I can assign a task to a user, provide notes as collaboration and feedback, and track all of this effort within my platform. The Intelligence Center also provides a feature called Workspaces, which helps us to organize data around key topics and threats. On the left side, we can see various workspaces created in this platform. From a pre-sales perspective, many use cases here that are documented for customers to understand. But then we can also create these around key threats. For example, threat actors, malwares, or vulnerabilities that we're investigating. If we're responding to incidents and doing casework, then we may create workspaces for these individual incidents. And these workspaces act as homes to store information about particular threats. Here I have a workspace dedicated to the actor we were discussing earlier, UNC4841. Here we've summarized some of the malwares they use. We can find the graph that we had previously visited earlier, and we can also use these workspaces as a way to store artifacts. Within my workspace, in the browse view, for example, we'll find several entities stored here related to this threat. We'll find collections that we've created, for example, reports that we've stored for future reference, and files that we may have uploaded as well can be stored within the workspace. In each of these cases, we can always then pivot and explore the related information. Here we have a workspace where we've created different collections to filter and categorize Team T5 intelligence to help us both understand the content and break it up into chunks for different workflows. For example, I have all of the exploits available, which I may use to explore and then pivot to known CVEs. I have the indicators organized into a single collection to help me with export for detection and prevention. I may wish to split this up further based on type if I want to separate hashes from infrastructure, for example. For the reports, I have a collection with all of the reports organized together, but I want to split these up further for different audiences, different workflows. So I've then created more complex queries to split these up into different sections. Here, for example, we can see all of the flash reports, but there are two language options available, so I further split these up into the different language options as well. All of these are based on searches, and all of these can be used as both alert rules and export. Now, finally, speaking of export, the last topic I want to cover for this demonstration, when we actually want to share data from the platform, we have a few different options. Firstly, we may decide that we want to share a report directly, in which case we have built-in export options to just quickly manually share an entity. We can also add these entities to datasets, as we call them, which help us with workflow. For example, for all of these extracted detection rules, like the snort rules, I may wish to add them to a specific collection. Here, I'm going to create a new dataset, and this will be for exporting to one of our infrastructure devices. 
This allows us to then store and share the information through specific collections. This allows us to take chunks of data from intelligence that we've collected, group it into different collections, and then export it based on our requirements. In the case of Snort rules, I may need to deploy them on something like an IDS. In the case of my Yara rules, I might have a detection system such as EDR, where I can detect against files that we've collected from endpoints. For any in indicators such as infrastructure or hashes, I may have SIEM or SOAR tooling where I may wish to orchestrate this further. In all of these cases, the data can be grouped and exported through different workflows. For actually reporting, it might be the case that we want to create a report. So on the left, I have the option to create a report. This allows me to manually produce a report within the platform. There are tools available here to help with writing, for example, summarizing or generating content to help with boilerplate, or if I've written a report, it can help me with revising the tone and structure. These also support tables and pictures, so you can create rich reports directly within the Intelligence Center and link it to the raw intelligence. This allows you to keep produced intelligence right next to the raw data and export it through the same workflows, removing the need to maintain a separate silo of intelligence and coordinating differences between them. This also means that other analysts can provide feedback and enhance the data, and it becomes more of a living document with the intelligence data rather than a static file repository. We can also take advantage of some of our newer features to make this process a little easier. We can now generate reports automatically using the built-in tooling. This allows us to produce reports from existing content, creating boilerplates for us to uh, enhance later on. For example, for this report here, I might wish to take the uh, CVE report that we collected from the blog post and produce a strategic report for it. In this example, we've chosen a specific entity and we've asked the platform to summarize this and produce it in such a way that it's suitable for different audiences. A very common task of analysts is to produce summaries and advisories for particular threats, but then do those for multiple audiences, one for your technical team to implement and then another for your CISO or C-level to consume. Here we've now created a new summary report. This has taken the full blog post that we collected and produced a small summary for us. In this situation, we can now come and edit this document, make some changes to ensure that it has exactly the information we need before sharing it out of the platform automatically. Another example I prepared here earlier was this CISO summary using the alternative choice there, just producing a one paragraph summary to quickly inform users uh, if they just want to understand the most basic nature of a threat. In all of these situations, this now exists as a new report that I can easily share or export within the platform. I think that's about all we have time for. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and your time. Uh, we still have a few minutes left in the webinar and we wanted to leave some time for questions for either myself or the Team T5 team in discussing their research. We'll now take any questions that today's viewers might have. Please post your questions in the Q&A section of this Zoom webinar, not in the public comments. We'll try to answer all the questions we can and we'll reply to any questions we can't via email as soon as possible. Okay, great. I've got a first question for Ben um, from EIQ. And the question is, uh, does EIQ support malware sandboxing? Thanks, Elliot. Uh, yes, malware sandboxing uh, is something we can integrate with. So if your organization has malware samples that they would like to detonate and then maybe collect intelligence from, we can collect that data and model it in the platform. There's the malware and malware analysis entities for doing this. So you can bring in both file information, uh, indicators that have been extracted, and if the sandbox technology supports it, it will also do things like mitre attack mapping as well. Thank you, Ben. Uh, a second question we have now, uh, which is for both of us, is uh, does Team T5 or EIQ offer free trials or uh, POCs? Um, I think I mentioned it in my slides, but Team T5 uh, for Fret Vision, we do offer a, a two-week free trial. Um, you can contact our sales if you're interested in uh, uh, participating in, in, a, in a trial like that to test out our features. Uh, but for Ben, if you would like to clarify on EIQ's side. Sure, yeah. Uh, Eclectic IQ offer POCs, and those are free of charge. So if you want to try out our software, um, we'd invite your team to contact us, and we'll provide an environment for you and spend some time with you walking through your use cases. Uh, in the future, we also hope to have a public test environment as well, so keep an eye out for that.
Great, thank you. And a third one for you, sorry, Ben, uh, it, which is uh, how is EIQ priced? Is it per user or is it credit based? Um, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so we integrate with a lot of third party technologies. So some in some cases, it might be a case of bring your own API key for those. Our product is very simple. We don't have any limitations regarding integrations or um, collection or search. The only pricing is based on users. So we'll work with you on your team. Uh, but it's only focused on the analysts. So for read-only users, for example, we typically don't charge. Thank you. And we have two final questions. These ones are uh, just for me. So the first one is, can customers subscribe to specific threat vision reports individually, or do they have to subscribe to all of the reports? So um, customers don't need to subscribe to all of threat vision's reports. Customers can subscribe to one particular series. Um, for example, our APT series, which includes uh, flash and monthly reports, or our vulnerability series, which includes the uh, vulnerability insights report and the patch management report. And the next question was, uh, the final question that we have today is, um, are the vulnerabilities featured in the uh, in FretVision's PMR and VIR reports focused only on edge devices, like the cases you mentioned in their presentation? Uh, so. Um, although we talked a lot about edge devices today, and a lot of modern critical vulnerabilities are related to edge devices, uh, our vulnerability reports don't only focus on them. We cover all vulnerabilities that we think our customers uh, need to know about. Um, but yeah, of course, that includes edge devices, and that is now a big part um, of, of those reports. Okay, um, we don't have any more questions. Uh, if you think of anything and you would like to ask us, uh, please do contact uh, Team V5 uh, or, or EIQ. I would be happy to uh, follow up on uh, any questions or um, anything you are curious about. Thank you for uh, listening. Um, uh, you've uh, you've all stayed on for, for quite a while, uh, about 45 minutes. Um, we hope uh, you'll be able to join any future webinars uh, that we hold. And thanks for your time. Likewise. Bye -bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.